point in it. So we are talking today about, and I am really loud, we are talking today about what has scared you. And I know I've only had one cup of coffee. We're going to be queuing up right back here on this back, the smaller stage over here. If you have any questions, come and see me. And guys, just if you want to start it off, what has scared you? What is scary? This is pretty scary right here. <laughs> Honestly, when we film the show, we don't see all you guys looking back at us, so it's, it's pretty rough. But no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I know, that's a creepy part. She says to me, I see us both today. <laughs> Dustin, what scares you? Um, you gotta do something every morning. Though. Yeah. <laughs> He left, 
we encouraged him to come back and finish up the season, and then he left for good. Um, but we have had a lot of guys. <laughs> There's one guy I'd say, now he's seen my house, but Justin Tucker. Yeah. He, uh, he, I guess he was walking into the lighthouse and this bright orange light came flying out past him and he heard his name called. And so he's like, screw that, I'm not going back in there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, <laughs> the producer's just like, I don't, you gotta go back in there, it's your job. And he's like, screw that, I quit. <laughs> he said, well, uh, how are you gonna get home? He's like, I'll walk. <laughs> God, you live in Connecticut. So Jay and I went in there to change the tapes, he needed to change, and, you know, he stayed with us for a little bit. But it's true, <laughs> Rob, do you have any stories on that? Yeah, we had a, uh, we had a guy, he's kind of like a California surfer type, he's one of our cameramen. And we were doing Pratyama Castle, which is like a pretty bugged out place to begin with. And we always joke around, he's like, I could do what these guys do, bro. Look at me, I'm a ghost hunter, why do you make a door slam, man? Bam, a door slam, and he's like, oh, the heck with this, bro. <laughs> Hey guys, it's great to see y'all here. Um, this is a question I thought of watching the show with uh, not so much the cases where the benign stuff happens, but like the really malevolent EPs you all get sometimes. Um, I know that y'all have white and, you know, families and, and whatnot. Do you ever worry or is it a concern that maybe your work might fall you home? And I'm not necessarily talking about the homeowners. <laughs> <laughs> Although that has happened, yeah. <laughs> um, Personally, I, it, for me, it would be very convenient if you follow me home, I can just do it from there. Uh, <laughs> but, I, like I said before, I consider myself a one-passenger vehicle. I just, I, it's just not an option for something to follow me home. And I can't prove that something has followed me home. There have been times where um, I'll be sitting there at home and some crazy activity will happen at my house, just out of nowhere, and then stop. And then within the hour, Jason will call and say, hey, we got a negative case up in Maine. And it's like that entity is just kind of posturing, saying, you know, look what I can do here, don't come and get me. It's just a challenge, you know? Say you could beat me up on camera, I'm mean, beating me up just get on camera, and I'm okay with that. But, uh, you know, you just gotta have the power inside, I guess. I don't know, I've never had an issue with it. Dustin? Uh, I've, uh, I've <laughs> never had uh, an issue with it uh, either, um, but obviously, you know, uh, family is something that we're always concerned about. Um, as you know, a lot of people know, Jane Grant had their share of stalkers and stuff that had to be uh, reprimanded and handled appropriately. So, uh, you know, but the majority of our fans and you know, 99% of the people we all meet are, are very cool and everybody's very respectful of coming up and saying hi. And, you know, I mean, everyone, I think the, the highest compliment we get, uh, and we heard a lot here at Dragon Con, is that we're just average guys, uh, which is still how we view ourselves. So, that's, uh, it's good to see that, you know, it goes both ways with everybody, so we're very thankful for everybody that's, uh, that's cool with us, too. Okay, I have two of the littlest fans who I'm going to bring up in a minute, and I usually don't do this if you've ever been with me, so come on, Mark. Hey, oh, I know you guys. <laughs> They are, mis they are missing Mr. Jason, so they wanted to give to Grant. There you go. And since they're not going back to the wall, Aww. Maybe 
Um, yeah, this isn't something that was on the show, but we did a case where the homeowners, this is back in Florida, um, the homeowners were terrified. Uh, the daughter didn't want to stay in the house, cried every night before she went to bed. So we got them out of the house, we did an investigation, and at one point during the evening, um, we heard two little kids talking to each other from this girl's bedroom. And we went in there, and the woman I was with, Sean Jones, um, she, she actually started provoking because whatever was in there was terrifying the residents. And I saw a DVR camera that we had well taped down. I saw the tape rip up off the ground. And as the provoking started, the camera spun 180 and faced the wall. And I'll tell you what, I was like, man, we've got to help these people. That's what we're here for. And thankfully, I had a good ending. But, you know, all that, all that evidence, all this stuff going on in one, like, you know, it took me aback from it. Dave, anything? Um, I usually don't like when uh, we do catch an EVP and it's like a little child or something. We were going about yesterday, but it's not like they're being tortured still. It's very sad. At one point they were being tortured or something and you leave it and cry and something like that. It's just like, it's just sad, you know, and uh, you know, at least we caught them on tape, at least they were hurt, you know? Uh, it's kind of a long list I could draw from. Uh, there are, uh, the worst cases I've seen are I mentioned it yesterday, and I'll, I'll say it again. There was a, a case where we were called in, and this nine-year-old girl was, I guess, possessed. She was talking really deep, like she'd been smoking for 40 years. <clears throat> Her body was contorting, and she was moving very erratically. Um, and she was able to move things that would be difficult for me to move. She was pulling down uh, bureaus and things like that, and uh, foaming at the mouth, things like that. Um, and it took four grown men to restrain her because, and that was very difficult because she still, she was very strong but she was still a nine year old girl. And once we restrained her, uh, we used religious provocation and she instantly fell asleep and she slept for two days straight. And uh, we found out later that her older sister was messing around with uh, friends with some, I don't know what you want to call it, dark magic, black magic, whatever you want to call it. And uh, they have odd concepts of ownership. And so technically, because her sister was younger than her, she owned her and was able to do these things to her. And, uh, you know, this was a wake-up call for that, that girl. And that, that's the stuff that affects me the most because <clears throat> some people, their house is haunted and they don't have, an op they don't have a choice. You know, it's just, it's just there. But it's not, it's not tormenting them. But when you have negative entities or occult-type behavior, it's, it's human beings that are alive and, in, and aware that are actually forcing negative things to happen to other people. It's just very selfish and wrong, and that's the stuff that just makes me angry. But um, <clears throat> that's kind of what affects me the most. A little too deep and heavy. But <laughs> please light it up, Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is a light question. It's okay. Yeah, it's no, good. it's not. <laughs> Um, I honestly don't have a, uh, an experience to relay um, that affected me in a negative way, but um, I have to say, and uh, this was St. Augustine at the Lighthouse, um, you know, after capturing that apparition uh, on video and seeing it, you know, with my own eyes, it really made me start to think about things that, you know, Grant mentioned before, um, in what we do, we're not out to to prove to people, you know, or affect people's views of the afterlife and things like that. But uh, for me personally, I, you know, I started thinking, I never really needed to prove it to me, I, you know, um, I've got my own beliefs and I don't preach anything to anybody, but, you know, regardless of, of whatever God or goddess you may or may not subscribe to, we're all here for some reason, and I think the bottom line is if, if something we do makes people think about what may happen after here, maybe we'll all just treat each other a little bit better while we are here. And I think that's pretty much the most important thing we can do. <laughs> Rob is once again harassing me because the question was opposite of what I said. <laughs> <laughs> no, I asked him to make it possible. <laughs> make love not more. Good morning, everyone. You guys are having a good time. Hope you come back next year. Uh, quick question. Speaking of what scares you most, uh, we all kind of know what scares Steve. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, just kind of wondering where Barry's at, what's he's up to, and like we were talking the other night, he's kind of sensitive. What scares Barry? Oh, yeah, he is sensitive. Don't put a lifetime movie on him. He will get sensitive. That opening scene when they shoot Bambi's mom? No, yeah, the Barry, first of all, is unfortunately couldn't make it this year. Hopefully, you know, we're going to tell him what an amazing time we had and try and get him here next year. He is a. Uh, he is at um, an Irish festival right now in Kansas City. He's coming to my house for the next week in Florida because we have to fly out together six days from now. But um, what scares Barry? I think, you know, a lot of people have asked me this over the weekend and said, you know, Barry always runs away from things. I think that's the way it may seem on the show. I don't think it's necessarily true. And I think what scares Barry more than anything is someone else getting hurt. I don't think he worries so much about himself, but he worries about his teammates. I can second that when I investigate with Barry. You're only going to have to put her in his charge. Yeah, like, I'm sitting down in this movie yet, you know, just kind of hanging out. I was kind of comfy down there. <laughs> and he's freaking out in footsteps, and he comes trucking up these stairs, which is very difficult to do, walking, and he comes up there. And I love watching on the show because he leans over the rail and goes, Oh dear God. <laughs> and then it comes to a commercial. It's like, I said to my wife, I said, man, if I knew what was going on right then, up there, because I couldn't hear anything, I would have been laying on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you would expect to see, but he was saying, oh, you're drunk because he was out of breath. <laughs> The other place where poor Dustin had to show the cow cow. <laughs> the whole time we were over there, he was just like, you know, I don't like what you're doing. And then he's just like, don't go in there, don't go in there. And of course, we were Americans, so we were like, hey, we were blasting right through everything. <laughs> and uh, he actually left that night because it made it so uncomfortable. You know, they're very, I don't know, they're very suspicious over there. You, you go into the pubs and there's these tough guys, Irish guys, look like they eat nails for breakfast. And, and, uh, you know, they're talking trash, and you say, so what do you think about the wee people? Mm, don't want to talk about it. It's just, it's very odd. <laughs> Good morning, guys. I have to ask, this is a question that comes up when we're watching your show, even though it's on a Wednesday night, because we TV. <laughs> They're in the middle of an investigation, they've made contact, lights are flashing, Steve's freaking out, Barry's going, Ooh. and it's called. During that point, off the camera, does somebody go, get them down here, we're talking to this thing. And all of y'all converge on it and just start communicating, or does it not happen at all? Because I mean, I, I remember a time where Tango was talking with a ghost, spirit, whatever, and the lights on the meter were just going, and it's like, can you give us a sign? Can you talk to us? Yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's like, all of a sudden, you know, the next scene we see is Jay going, hey guys, it's been a really rough night, it's been 12 hours. <laughs> did you guys come in and start talking to the thing, or did it just... Well, what, the way we do it is uh, we separate into teams, obviously, and each team is free to have their own experience, and, and they, they, we work separately from each other. Um, and honestly, if Dave and Steve are getting some crazy activity, the last thing I want to do is barge in there and be like, hey, guys, what's going on? You know? And all the activity would stop. So you want to let it, it you know, peter out on its own, um, and then they come and tell us what happened, and we'll sure we'll go to the same area and try it out. But you got to remember, it takes two weeks about to film a case, and that's for theirs. You know, so uh, you got two weeks of footage boiled down to 43 minutes. It, it gets awkward when you watch it. Yeah, right, exactly. But uh, that's why they're going to choose Gaffer King seasons. Thank you. Oh, I do. <laughs> I understand your uh, technical difficulties when you're doing external investigations. But however, both the international and the local group, have you ever looked at battlefields, you know, in Vergara and things like that in Europe, uh, the Holocaust, uh, prisoner of war camps and internment camps? 
they've actually asked us if we would go and do like Ground Zero in New York or Auschwitz in, you know, Austria, Germany over there. Um, honestly, I think those hit a little too close to home and I think that I would hate to stir up activity there. Um, no need for it. I think we all know what happened there. Um, let them rest. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> That's about what I gotta say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, Especially the battlefield, maybe. It's going to be coming up. Um, we are going to be filming one, hopefully, fingers crossed, an outdoor location, much like you mentioned, um, from WW2 over in Asia that has some really strange, nasty history behind it. So hopefully, we get something. It'll be interesting to find out. Everyone wants us to check out the battlefields in Gettysburg and things like that. So we've talked to people at Gettysburg, they, they, they're good friends, they love us, but they will not allow you to film there. And honestly, I wouldn't film there. Um, they don't let anyone on there at night. And if you're on there at night, then you've broken the law, so I'm like, keep yourself quiet. Don't tell anyone. But, uh, um, I, honestly, I wouldn't film there anyway. I don't like to film in places that aren't controlled, because if it proves to be really haunted, the next thing you know, you got teenagers out there drinking beer, trying to do beach boards and all this stuff, and it's just... That's why we don't do cemeteries and things like that. Grant, you have said um, in past panels that how you got started in TAPS was something that happened to you. Oh boy, yeah. So, not was it? <laughs> you don't talk about it? I, I don't like to talk about okay. it too much, but it's, it's fine. Cool. I mean, I can, I can. That's cool. I can touch on it, but. Um, no, seriously, I mean, I've been married for 12 years in February, and, uh, you know, my wife knew I had an experience, but she didn't know it well until just a few years ago, so it took her that long to pull it out of me. Um, honestly, just, it, I was 15, it lasted about two years, it was with the aspect of the paranormal that, uh, very rare, and I've yet to find someone who can give me any answers on it. A lot of people claim they can, but they can't, and, uh, it comes back from time to time. <coughs> And uh, it's, it's such a thing that it, it just, I mean, reality goes, goes right out the window. Religion can't describe it. Um, science can't describe it. I, I can't figure out what it is. But uh, it certainly has been an integral part of my life and my mentality towards life and people. And it's getting way too deep and not making any sense. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Maybe someday when the time is right, I'll, I'll say but uh, right now it's just it's too personal. Um, can I get one of my staff members in here real quick, please? And then we have the question. First of all, Dustin, the other night, I'm sorry I called you Tango. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, no problem. I, was, uh, I mentioned to her, I said, love when people come up to me and they're like, I want your show all the time. And I gotta tell you, Steve, you're my favorite. <laughs> This is how you remember, hat, no hat. <laughs> Upside down by the back. Well, you wasn't wearing it at the time. So <laughs> what I really wanted to know about was, is I know that you were a very close-knit group and everything like that. Um, what was the best practical joke that was ever played by anyone? <laughs>
And Jay knocks on the door. Do, do, do. Just one second. I'm almost done. <laughs> do, do, do. Okay, this I'll be done. Do, do, do. Guys, I know it's you. <laughs> Kept doing it till the vulgarity started coming, right? <laughs> Donna Sweet, right? I mean, <laughs> boy, yeah, she started getting real heated. Just a minute. I'll be right out. And then up walks up the aisle, walks this little old lady. <laughs>
it's kind of interesting because when we were in Ireland, uh, we had a couple brushes with this, like Dustin was saying, where they're actually building a new highway. And they found that the highway was going too close to a ferry tree, what they call it. And so they spent another 7 million euros to move the highway around the tree. And we were talking to construction, you know, uh, uh, contractors. And uh, a lot of them, if you want to add an addition to your home, they will uh, build these little cairns, these piles of rocks, in the corners of where the new addition would be. And they'll leave them there for two weeks. And when they come back, if they're knocked down, they won't build the addition. So if like a little fairy comes and says, now, it takes a rock. <laughs> but I mean, that's their livelihood. That's how they make their money. And that's how seriously they take the activity over there. It's, it's an unbelievable. Hey guys, um, I was just wondering, we've heard about what scares you on the investigations, but what are a what are personal phobias? Like we all know Steve has, oh, I don't like to fly, oh, is a spider going away? <laughs> <laughs> what really scares you as far as I often wonder if we ever did get Steve on a plane and there was a spider. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that movie, Spiders on the Plane. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I have uh, irrational fears. Um, I have uh, really bad OCD, and Grant knows this. I have uh, things that I'm just afraid of that don't make sense. I don't really want to talk about them, but uh, it's just like things that other people like. Really, you're afraid of that? So well, I would say that's so that it's fear. It just makes you uncomfortable. Yeah, things. Yeah, little things. Honestly, I mean, my fears are pretty rational. Like I don't want, I don't want someone to take my kids. I mean, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, I would be terrified if I lost my hands because I draw, I play music, and you know, I, I can't imagine not having them. <laughs> how, how would you lose my hands in a free plumbing accident? <laughs> I don't know. I just, like, I see people without hands every once in a while. I'm scared. Of <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I never like clowns and dogs. Yes, don't like clowns. I don't get it, uh, you know? When we had, my wife and I got married, she had a collection of dolls when she was a kid. She's packing them up, you know, to move in, and like, he can leave those. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, don't, I don't really, I'm not afraid of them, I just don't like them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like seeing a face look back in through the window. So. Um, as a, well, as a kid, and pretty much still, I've never, and this is tough because of, all right, <laughs> the um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie, which is fantastic. The new one, I'm okay with. The old one, I really like. The one, the little orange guys, the little bills. They're doing everything in unison and stuff, and they're orange, and it's just a little too freaky for me, so. <laughs> I, they were always a childhood problem for me. And to the point where, if, you know, I was being a bad boy, uh, I would, uh, my parents would just sing the song, and I would just go to my room. <laughs> They're three-dimensional there. 
<laughs> Jay and I were down in the basement facing the main line, and uh, we kept seeing this shadow walking by. We thought uh, the woman's kid was down there, so we wanted to make sure that he stayed far enough away. And uh, we saw full on there was an entity down there, so we went up and told the lady, and we're just like, hey, and this kind of sounds weird, but did you ever have experience in your basement? And she just broke down, and she had some serious problems, so we came back and helped her out. The plumbing stuff really rocks with you guys. Plumbing, <laughs> man. I think I'm gonna bring some like Drano. I'll find that stuff. So. <laughs> All of us have had plumbing problems, so we're all things related. But did you ever think plumbing questions would come up in Dragon? <laughs> Actually, I totally just am ready for anything. <laughs> Do you think that the association with the show has in, you know, you're obviously a very tight knit group. Has this affected the way that Tax itself holds? Has the show affected you in a negative manner, not affected you, or affected you in a positive manner? I gotta say that at the beginning it was it was not good. Uh, it was very difficult. We had to totally reinvent how we investigate. You know, we had crew around with us, and they were on a timeline. You know, they can only work twelve hours, and then they've got to stop. So we had to really. At the beginning, it was it was not good. We were having a lot of, a lot of stress, a lot of uh, you know nipping at each other. I think you can see that. Um, but once we figured that out, honestly, it was like, it was, we were like purged by fire. It was a very difficult process, but now it's brought us way closer than ever. Our investigating is better than ever. And, uh, you know, I, I'm glad that it happened. And when the show stops, um, our investigation techniques will be way better than they would have been without the show, I think. The blessing I got out of the show, I'm sure if you guys do, is just that I got, I get to investigate places that, that I would not have ever. You know, and that, thanks to the brand, especially for, you know, bringing me on, I get to do this, and it's just, I love it, it's so awesome. But the, the dynamics of, of our relationships and stuff, we've gotten way tighter, way closer, because you practically live together, I mean, you're on the road all the time. And even when we're, we're done investigating, we don't go to our separate rooms and disappear, I mean, we, we go and do stuff, we go out and eat and everything, and uh, it's incredible, I thought we would have killed each other by now. <laughs> As a follow-up for that, for the international group, you were brought together, and you had to build your team as you go, and how has that helped you through the show, building a family, as it were? Dustin? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we kind of, we joke uh, off camera that, uh, you know, the guys from GH are kind of like the Beatles, and we're kind of like the monkeys. <laughs> Which was cool because I got to, to ride over here with one of them, and he was awesome. I didn't tell him that comparison; it'd be kind of awkward. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, we're, we're really tight. We had a great time out there, and uh, you know, it's one of those things where you just really hope that uh, the people you're going to work with and the personalities mesh. And uh, we've been very fortunate, um, and we all have a, a strong passion for quad biking, which uh, is what we usually do on our days off. And uh, we did that a lot in Africa, and uh, Barry enjoyed covering this all with dirt. Um, that was his favorite thing to do. He just kicked up dirt all over us. But yeah, we you know we we hang out and uh, we we hang out off camera and on camera, and uh, no, it's come together very well. So I think we're very lucky. He never answers the question. <laughs> <laughs> he said you, you built your family. I was with him until he went into quad biking. Well, and he broke. Why did you toss it to me, man? You should have handled the question yourself. Oh, tell you what, you should step back. Go. <laughs> Anybody who's visited our table in the last three days knows that Rob and I have a very fun relationship together. <laughs> Rob pretty much just disses me the whole time, and I have to defend myself. But it's entertaining to him, so I like that. <laughs> Guys, they 
thanks for coming and hanging out with us this weekend. Likewise, thank you. So here's a weird question for you. My husband actually works in a 90-year-old historic home that based on events and actual entity sightings, the entire staff believes is haunted. But the only reason no one's ever called anybody like you is because the owner's a little weird and freaky and he's afraid that you would find something and that then it would be televised and that might drop the value of his house. So have you ever had any crazy freaky owners that when you got there said, no, you can't investigate or no, I don't want it televised or really didn't want you to find something? Well, we do that ahead of time. I mean, we're not going to just show up and be like, hey, can we film this by the way? <laughs> I mean, we, we really make sure we, we know it's good, but we have had some that we pulled up to and we just had them in Florida. Oh, yeah. We pull up there and some guy, I don't know, strung out on a crack or something, and it's like, you can't film here. He's like, our neighbor is just too high in the neighborhood. And we're like, what are you talking about? The house was supposed to be abandoned, and he's like, he's like, the people behind me are from Brennan's restaurant, which... We know them very well. We can walk over and say, hey, um, yeah, you, you get, every once in a while you get some, like I said, the people freak you out. It's not the ghosts. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you, you do get into that. And honestly, to each their own. He, maybe that guy is a ghost. I don't know. He sounds old and freaky. Who knows? <laughs> but you do, you do get some that are, that are worked out. But we, we do our homework ahead of time. You're not gonna just going to show up and, and say, by the way, I can't Okay. Now, we always seem that you do the investigations at night. Have you ever done any investigations during the day? Because I've had experiences during the middle of the day. Sure. And in fact, even in a graveyard, which kind of freaked me out at first. Oh, yeah, of course. We, we do lots of cases during the day. The problem, the reason we do them at night, um, uh, twofold. I mean, that's the best time to use your IR cameras, which can catch the shadows and the faint lights. So if you have no light on and use IR, it works best. But also, that's a carryover because that's when we would have free time. You know, we've got families and jobs, and that's when you can get over there. And honestly, that's when most people are, are in their homes after work. The most most reports occur between 8 p.m. and 4 a.m. So, but uh, the very first episode of Ghost Hunters was investigated during the day. With, uh, with Brenda and her, her daughter. So we, we do whatever we gotta do. Mm -hmm. Hi. Given your phenomenal success and a certain frustration level in watching, and this is for both shows, have you considered helmet mount or just like a forehead mount camera so that... I'm gonna make a t-shirt. Did you just hand that? No, because I'm holding a camera pointing at the floor right now. Okay. <laughs> we have considered it. And the problem is, if we had head-mounted cams on, you wouldn't see anything. For the very reason that we have IR light coming from the, the cameraman, from our uh, setup cameras, and if we added head cams into that, honestly, all you would see is bright white light the whole time. Um, those are great for shows where you're sending one poor kid down the hallway to get to wet himself, you know? <laughs> um, but it's, it's a valid question, it's a valid uh, idea. Um, we thought about it and it just blew, the IR just blows out everything and you can't see anything. I mean, you wouldn't even be able to to see what we were saying because we would blow out the cameras all the time. No problem. You guys might not know the, uh, the answer to this question, but it's uh, in the Ghost Hunting book. Uh, Jason talks about green olives being able to suppress supernatural paranormal activity. Is there any theories behind that on why that works? Well, um, to clarify, it's if you are, if you believe you're sensitive, supposedly, I'm not sensitive, so I don't know, supposedly there are different things you can do. And one of them is just downing a bunch of green olives, I guess, tends to suppress it. Maybe the guy who came up with that sells green olives, I don't know. <laughs> there is some, um, we are looking into doing some studies about, um, the, the fact that there's so much salt in there, maybe combined with the olive, but um, we, I've noticed that when my wife has some kind of, I don't know, abilities, I don't know, but she sure sees a whole lot more and picks up on more than I do. And uh, when she's pregnant, then it turns right off. It doesn't happen. And, you know, I took that and applied it to the whole olive thing, and, and when you're pregnant, your body retains salt, so I don't know if maybe it has to do with salt. And of course, the old pagan belief you put a salt circle around. And, I don't know. I'm kind of just guessing here, but we, I, we got to do some experiments there to figure that out. I was just wondering how Donna was doing. 
Donna's doing great, honestly. Donna has, um, you know, she has some health issues, and I think, you know, filming a show is really stressful, and especially where your sleep schedule is so messed up. And I think she did a very brave thing, did the right thing, to just take a break. And uh, I saw her shortly, you know, uh, what, like a month ago at TaxCon. She was there, and she looked great. She looked well rested and stress free. That's what I've got. No, uh, yeah, Donna's happy, she's doing much better, and I will say that honestly, she really appreciates all the support that people have been sending her and all the well wishes. My question is about EVPs. Um, I know sometimes when you ask the questions, you're more straightforward, like, can you give us a sign, or um, do you know you're dead, or, you know, certain questions <laughs> like that. Or then, or then um, sometimes you're more emotional, like you appeal to the more of the spirit, maybe does one get a better result than the other? Well, it's tricky because a lot of people. I love watching. We do these events where people come and investigate with us. You put them in the room, they get to record, and they're like, "Is there anybody here? Can you give us a sign of your presence?" Just look. Wait, hold on. You're talking to a human being. I've never asked another human if they could give me a sign of their presence. Um, so we, uh, we always teach people to just speak to them as if they're human being because that's what they are. Just, you know, hey, I'm Grant. I'm looking for somebody. I can't see you or hear you. Can you, can you let me know you're here? Um, I stay away from saying, you know, do you know you're dead? Because if I walked up to you and said right now and said, hey, do you realize that you're dead? It might really mess with your mind. <laughs> so, uh, um, honestly, you have to try everything. Usually when we do EVP work, um, the standard technique is to go in the room, turn on the recorder, tag it, go in the room, and just let it record for a little bit. Because you might catch something off guard. And then you do direct question. Introduce yourself, you know, try and get some kind of response. And then after that, you just talk amongst ourselves. It kind of takes the spotlight off the entity, and you get a lot of responses that way. So, um, I guess it's all a matter of how much um, oomph you got in here that night. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, but... There's no particular um, technique other than that, what I just said that really seems to work. Uh, earlier, the subject of people who are sensitive came up. Um, I've been close to a few people who really are sensitive to that kind of thing, have seen a lot. And I was wondering do you find that those people attract? more of that sort of thing, or is it just, it's all around and they just can see it a lot better? I don't know. It's, uh, I, mean, I would tend to think, you know, one of the things we've been working on, and, you know, not to get too far off subject, but, like, the full spectrum camera, what we're trying to do is basically, you know, almost do what a psychic can do without the camera. I'm not a sensitive, as Grant mentioned, he's not sensitive, so we need the equipment to back up any experience. But you know, as far as sensitive goes, um, I think it's terrific and I think that what they're essentially doing is being able to see more than most of us can. You know, and there's a lot of people who say they have this ability. I've met a couple who I believe in and you know, so yeah, I'm doing a dusting here, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Met with, I, we actually used to work with the Ryan Research Institute and test state psychics, and um, uh, a lot of times they they're just seeing like honestly, we when we train people, we tell them look, whether you believe it or not, just accept the fact that these entities are around you all the time. You're taking a shower and dropping a deuce, whatever. <laughs> they're there. <laughs> they're there. Just accept it, because then when you see one, it won't be so surprising. Um, <laughs> We all do that, right? <laughs> it's again one of those things being prepared for oh, me. <laughs> it's the fourth day. But, but um, honestly, talk to these people that can be very disturbed because, uh, like, I, I, I knew one person where I would have to walk in the first into the room first and shake the hands of the people in the room, so that person knew who was alive and who was not, and. Um, she always walked around with her head down like this because if she made con eye contact with an entity, it wouldn't leave her alone. 
So, I mean, it can be pretty severe, and there are people that are really bothered by it. And we have a good friend, uh, Adam Bly, who actually goes around to mental institutions and is able to discern the difference between people who are sensitive and uh, schizophrenic. Now, how he does that, I don't know, but the people who he, who he, know, who he, he guesses, I guess, are sensitive, he's able to bring them back down to sanity and get them out of it. So that, that guy is amazing. Who the hell, who is even thinking about that, you know? So I think it's a combination of both, yeah. They see more and stuff can be attracted because they can see This is our last question from the floor. Uh, hey, um, about the Goldfield Hotel, mm -hmm. there was another show where they investigated in the basement and they were almost practically chased out. And when you guys went, you didn't really do the basement. Did you guys get to investigate and you just didn't see it? Well, see, this is the problem with TV. We did investigate the basement. And we investigated, we all investigated, we investigated for two, three hours each. And uh, just like we did every other part of that hotel. The thing is, if nothing happens, they're not going to waste your time. <laughs> so, um, in fact, they We've had, uh, in season one, we investigated 30 locations, and I think they only used maybe 13 or 15. Um, nothing happens, I'm not going to bore you. Um, honestly, we had activity elsewhere. So, welcome to the, we're victims of editing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, thank you very much. Guys, we're tired, but we're happy. And we're so glad you guys came out. Using your power, huh? <laughs> First prize and honorable mention. I that. Um, <laughs> no, you've been at Dragon Con for four days. Some of you, this would be 12 days total at Dragon Con, or eight days. So, starting with Rob, not that what has scared you, but maybe what has startled or surprised you when you've been around Dragon Con so far in these past four days. <laughs> That's a loaded question. Yeah. Going out with a bang. I gotta, I gotta edit myself on this one. Um, yeah, I guess seeing duct tape wardrobe. I was just gonna say that. It's got a hurt coming off. It's got a hurt coming off. It's got a hurt coming off. <laughs> duct tape on the wardrobe. It's part of the experience. Okay, anyway, that's you are. For naked women. <laughs> you don't see that every day. You walk around and it's just, no, honestly, I have to maybe switch it a little bit. The coolest thing I love about Dragon Con is like, I see, I mean, I have the comic books, I'm into like superheroes, stuff like that. Yeah, you know, I'm a geek. But like, um, I go around and it's like they're real, like they're it's seeing them in real life and I get so charged. I'm like, wow, you know, and I go up to some moments like, are you going to protect me? Something happens? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to protect you. Right. They're going to <laughs> so, I mean, it's, just, it's so cool. It's like you're living in a fantasy world, and that's what I love about this the most. I love it. I'm super geek. I love the Star Wars. I love the anime. I love it all. And, uh, you know, I, even when you guys stop and buy us, I'm still going to come back. <laughs> and, uh, I don't need to come back. There are people in this room that if I say stop and bite I'm like having to run out of the back. <laughs> Honestly, uh, yeah, the, the, the uh, first year I was here, okay, I walk in the door, and I look, and I see a gentleman dressed as a Lego man. <laughs> Legos meant a lot to me as a kid, so I was like, oh, that's awesome, look at that. And you look over, and there's a woman wearing a, a caution tape. <laughs> and behind her is a woman wearing a G-string and painted. Nothing else. So I'm like... Mental whiplash, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, kid, ah, kid, ah. <laughs> and, uh, and then Jason and I were in the elevator. One of the few times, just him and I in the elevator, comes down, ding, hits the floor, door opens, and it must have been a 300 pound guy in just a few street. Sorry. So he takes one step on the elevator, I look at Jay, and Jay looks at me and goes, no. <laughs> The guy steps off the elevator. <laughs> and if you are wondering why that lovely man is not here to celebrate his daughter's birthday, just had to get that out there, make sure you're all just not. But, uh, 
That's why we love it. <laughs> yes, that's why I let my child come in the morning, and then you know, there's a seven o'clock cut off time. <laughs> yeah, it goes from PG to you know R to NC seventeen. <laughs> then I go to bed. <laughs> Dustin. Yeah, this was, uh, this was my first time down here and really didn't know exactly what to expect. And, and really, uh, I have to commend everybody. Um, you know, everybody's been great. But, you know, some people really go all out with these costumes and these outfits. Um, there's not many other places where I can, you know, wake up and look out my window and I look down the street and there's like a whole horde of stormtroopers. <laughs> yeah, it looks cool. Um, and I can say this because there's at least a half a dozen Batman, so if the real one's here, you won't be offended. But I'm walking down to the convention, uh, the Walk of Fame thing is wrong. I've got my little box of pictures and I'm waiting for the light to change. And I hear somebody, you know, obviously having an argument where all people we argue sometimes and this guy dressed as Batman is cursing out a woman dressed as an angel. <laughs> <laughs> There's pretty much nowhere else you'll ever see that. <laughs> Love it. Where else can you dress how you want and say what you want? It's the most amazing group of people. Just the nicest people. Everyone's just looking at a good time. And there's nowhere like it on Earth. Well, thank you.